Well, what is happening, DC fans? Welcome back to the channel. I am D.L. Vince, and welcome to another edition of D.L.'s Podcast. If you guys are new to the channel, this is the channel talking about all the things in the world of movies. So if you guys love talking about film and enjoy my content, I hope you strongly consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. And please hit that bell to be notified on future videos I'll be doing. But today we are journeying back into the DC Extended Universe, DCEU, DC Films, all that general. Um, finally, we're going to be talking about Wonder Woman 1984, full spoiler discussion. So we're going to spoil everything about this movie. I already did a non-spoiler review back in uh, December, so if you guys want to check that out. If you guys are one of the few souls that haven't seen Wonder Woman 84, yeah, I would suggest you guys go watch it or watch my non-spoiler review and then come back when you watch the movie because like I said we're going to talk about every little detail now it's going to be unfiltered all that stuff so you have been warned but yeah we're finally going to be getting at the spoilers for Wonder Woman 84 and joining with me today I have Evan hey and we have a newcomer to the podcast she is my girlfriend aka my other half <laughs> the other half of my heart. It, she is Shay. <laughs> Hello. So yeah, first time on the channel. Mm -hmm. uh, just to let you guys know, she she hasn't really watched anything <laughs> on my channel yet. So, so she has she she you is. Just drag me on the internet. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Let's like, hey, it's a given fact. If you if you bring your girlfriend slash boyfriend on your channel, your views will go up. So hopefully you will help <laughs> me with that. <laughs> Yeah, she's my charming personality. Yes. She, she is a thrill. She's a big nerd as well. So, glad to have her on the channel for the first time. But, uh, yeah. So, let's, let's get into Wonder Woman 84. This will be a very interesting conversation. Because I know we have varying opinions about this film. So, if you guys uh, have watched my non-spoiler review of Wonder Woman 84, you guys will know that I, I, enjoyed the, I enjoyed the movie the first time I saw it. Um, I enjoyed the first Wonder Woman. I didn't love the movie. I had some problems with it, but overall I thought it was an enjoyable film and the only good female-driven superhero movie we got out there. And I really liked Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman, and I thought Patty Jenkins did a good job directing the first film. Going into this, I wasn't... I wasn't expecting too much, you know, I was expecting just a fun time, something that's consistent with the first movie, and um, the first time I watched it, um, that's what I thought, I mean, I thought it was pretty consistent with the first movie, I enjoyed it almost as much as the first one. I watched this, like, four more times. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, because, like, you know. I, 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 I yeah I was yeah I was enjoying it the first couple of times so like yeah I'm a watch I'm getting my watch in before it gets out of HBO Max you know mm -hmm. and then the more I watch it the more I'm seeing okay yeah the, okay there's some problems there. the more nitpicking there's more nitpicking more stuff yeah that I wasn't plot digging holes. as much yet plot yeah. holes and stuff so now uh, my thoughts on the movie are I mean I still I still like it. I still like it. I still had a good time with most of the film, but yeah, I didn't think this was as good as the first movie. It was a bit of a disappointment compared to the first one, but for me, it wasn't that much because, like, as I said, I going into this, I didn't expect much from it. I was just expecting a fun, feel-good movie. Like, I feel like the I feel like that was what was going on in the first film. I, I mean, granted the story was better structured in the first film, it was more grounded in the first movie, but like, I don't know, I mean, I still had a good time with it. There are, there are plot holes up the ass in this movie. There's inconsistencies in this film. There's some tonal issues here and there, but it was enough to be like, I thought this sucked. But that's that's how I'm feeling now. So we're gonna go to newcomer <laughs> Shay. Uh, first of all, before we get to your thoughts on Wonder Woman eighty four, what has your ex been your experience with the DC films up to this point? I know oh. you. I know you just watched Man of Steel and yeah. um, Batman v so Superman. Seen, yeah. yeah, and then I've also seen the first Wonder Woman, which is mm -hmm. my favorite DC movie that I've seen so far. Will probably remain my favorite because <laughs> you know Wonder Woman is a badass. <laughs> Sure. And she's just the best. She also has the best music, I think, the best musical theme for any of the DC superheroes. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, so, I'm partial to the su Superman my... theme in Man of Steel, but like, yeah. the Wonder Woman one does kick ass for sure. Love yeah. it. 
So I definitely was a fan of the first film. Going into this one, I didn't have any particular expectations, but I thought it had a very different vibe than the first one. The first one was darker. I thought they were in World War One. It kind of has to be darker. Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely enjoyed the first film more than this one, and I had a couple different issues with it that I'm sure we can get into a bit later. Yeah. Okay. All right, Evan, tell us, what are your thoughts on One Woman 1984? All right. So, I yeah, I've, you know, I've done DC reviews on the channel before, and I've always mostly enjoyed all the DC movies up until this point. And, you know, I love the first Wonder Woman. I thought it was really good, and I think Gal Gadot, Gal Gadot is great as the character. This movie, however, I can't say it's a good movie. I don't like it very much. It was extremely disappointing for me. Okay. So, so Shay, you would say you're okay with it? You're I'm okay. okay with it. I have issues with certain parts of it, aspects of it for sure, and I didn't enjoy it as much as the first one, but okay. I haven't watched it five times to pick apart every little detail. Mm. Um, Cree may make an appearance in this podcast. I don't know. Whenever she gets, whenever she gets here, um... I don't know what her opinion is on it. She's like meh about it too, from what I hear. Yeah, I think she's more in more like Shay's opinion, where yeah. like she has problems with it, but I don't think she she doesn't dislike it. Yeah, because I know she's she's a huge Wonder Woman fan as well, because she used to be called Crimson Amazon on the channel, so that's how big an influence she, uh, she has on her. But um, yeah, so yeah, I like it. People are people are okay. You just don't like it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, let's um, let's get into details then. Um, I want to talk about like the whole overall framing of it being in 1984. Um, I don't know. I was mixed on it, specifically with the marketing because the marketing didn't really blow me away. I was like more confused of anything. Like it was all bright and colorful and zany yeah, and i'm like this is a 80s. yes we're complete 180 of the first movie like was i expecting the exact same tone from the first movie no because as we said it's in world war one but this was like this is a direction i didn't necessarily like didn't really want them to go in but at the same time i was not surprised because the first movie it felt like this was the direction it was going into because patty jenkins likes more of the more of the optimistic peacemaker type of Wonder Woman not so much the warrior that you know that's killing people with swords or whatever which we think that's awesome yeah, like, <laughs> yes. I, love I want more of that just, like fight people with swords like, that's, like, awesome. that's, a, that's cool and uh, fun fact that um the uh, Zack Snyder who was you know overwhelming the DCEU at the time like was going to go more into that like I forget it was I forget what war that he wanted this second movie to be in but um there was like a freaking picture of her having severed heads of of for the people that he cut off with his sword or whatever it was going to go into that dark of a direction I don't know how I would feel about it personally but like at the same time, I want to see Wonder Woman kick ass. You know, the sword and the shield. That's Vietnam cool. Vietnam War. That's that's a probably that's what that makes me think of. Maybe yeah. that. I'm not sure. I'm sure people in the comments will correct me on that. But um, but anyway, yeah. So I know for a lot of people, like they were like, oh my god, I can't believe it's got this such light and tone and campiness or whatever. And I'm just sitting here like, are you guys really that surprised? Are you guys really that shocked? It's just a very big jump, I think, from the first film. I, to go from a war to starting like in a mall in the eighties. Mall in the eighties. Yeah, which I know like a lot of people had issue with um, with the movie guys that mall scene we'll get into yeah. in a minute. But um, I don't know for me, like when I saw it in the context of the of the film, it actually wasn't as campy as I thought it was going to be like I thought like the aesthetic of 1984 was the thing I was going to hate about this movie the most and it's like they were it wasn't too self-indulgent with the 80s in my opinion because I was expecting it to be like as silly as like I don't know the Christopher Reeve movies or whatever or like some of the Marvel films that you know that has like 
weird comedic tonal stuff in there but it's like for me i was like oh you know what this actually wasn't that bad like the one thing that people criticized the main thing they criticized was that mall scene like, a lot of people thought that was ridiculous and for me i was like okay yeah i mean there was some cheesy stuff in there but i still had a blast with it i thought it was cool um just seeing her like take out all the criminals and her sliding everywhere on the ball and saving the girl from falling from that guy that dropped her from the from the second floor of the mall and stuff like that. I thought, I thought all that was cool. The stuff with the little girl, though, was kind of cheesy. Like, you're just going to slide her down the floor and, oh, it lands into a teddy bear. <laughs> I thought that was cute. I didn't mind the mall scene. And they were, like, winking at each other, like, extremely hard. I'm like, oh, okay, that, that's, that's a little cheesy. But even though, even with that, I thought... I thought it was I thought it was fine. It was fine. Like I was like, okay, if this is if this is where we're going, I'll be fine with it. I like the Mulsey. I thought yeah, that I was one of it. my that was one of the best parts of the movie for me. That's the kind of stuff I want to see. You're like the oh, the only two people that I heard like that. <laughs> so I'm like that's <laughs> like it's cool. she needs to beat some guys up. Mm-hmm. Cool. It's pretty cool. Like to watch her like just be the boss <laughs> like yeah yeah be in yeah. charge of the situation and i thought it was cute with the little girl yeah i, th- I thought it was yeah. cute as well i didn't have a problem with them all so yeah oh you were mentioning the marketing i did not like the marketing for this movie because like you were saying it's all the bright colors yeah and that's what i thought the movie was gonna look like mm. and then the movie is just bland looking uh, i didn't think it was bland looking i think it was consistent with how the to- well how the color palette was in the first movie because like it was more vibrant than Man of Steel and BVS but it wasn't oversaturated like some of the Marvel films I think there was more of a balance and plus it fit the tone of the film you know I just thought the marketing was misleading with all the colors yeah if it was as zany and colorful as it was in the in the in the trailers I probably wouldn't have liked it that it would have been too much for me because that's the stuff I hated in Justice League, like mm-hmm. oversaturated colors like that. So I was like, mm, no. By the way, Shay has not seen Justice League because I did not know what to torture her. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like she needs to see it though, so she can have a comparison between Justice League and Zack, Zack Snyder's, Snyder's Justice, Justice League. League. Yeah. So maybe, maybe we'll have a movie night and I'll show her and see what she <laughs> thinks. But, um, but Add yeah. It to the list. Yeah. <laughs> um, did it bother you guys that the Lauren Shield was gone in this movie? Uh, I mean, it didn't ruin the movie for me, but I definitely felt, you know, that it was missing. I, I wish it was in there. Mm. Yeah. I think. I just think she looks so cool. <laughs> yeah. Like a sword, it would have been fun. Yeah, it's, I would have liked her to have it. Yeah. It's weird because like, she was going out of her way, being like, "I don't want to kill people," or it's like she don't like guns or whatever, and it's like. You were just, you were just killing people in the first film. Well, a lot of time has passed between the first one and the second one. Which is very mm-hmm. true. So there has to be like some progression of her character. She's not gonna think or feel the same way as she did in World War One. So which is, yeah. that's yeah. something that's consistent. And since it was during a war, it's a little different than just killing someone. Right. Yeah. So that's fine. Um, so uh let's get into i want to talk about the villains um first we'll talk about i know i know y'all have some things to say about maxwell lord we'll get to that in a minute, but let's talk about kristen wig as cheetah i don't like kristen wig as i made i made that clear on this channel before i'm not a fan of hers um she's really hit or miss for me like her saturday night live stuff is okay but like as far as her roles in movies eh. Um, Ghostbusters 2016, she was okay. She was okay. I think that was the last thing I saw her in. But when she was casted as Cheetah, I was like, why? Just why? What is up with these weird castings? Is this going to be Ew McGregor as Black Mask in uh, Birds of Prey again, where it's just going to feel completely out of place? Because DC likes to do these weird castings. Most of the time it works, but some of the times I'm just like, why? And surprisingly enough, I think she I thought she was great. I really liked her as Cheetah. Um I thought she was gonna play it completely for laughs, like like some of the examples like Edward Nigma in Batman Forever, played by Jim Carrey, or um Aldrich Killian in Iron Man Three, or Electro in Amazing Spider Man Two. I thought it was gonna be that type of ridiculous, but it actually wasn't. Like she actually felt like a person. Yes, she was awkward and dorky. 
but it felt like a natural awkward and dorky because like we know some awkward and dorky people in our time i'm one of them so it's just like it's nice to see like someone playing that type of character and doesn't feel out of place or like a cartoon and i thought kristen wiig was going to do that all throughout the film but she wasn't she actually was sympathetic actually you know cared about her you know i thought she was sympathetic so i thought she was really good so what'd you guys think about her I liked her character. Like, you could really feel for Barbara and kind of see why she was making the choices that she was making. Not that she made good choices, right. but you could understand how she got to that point. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was a good portrayal. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I thought Kristen Wiig did a great job. Yeah. And she was, she was really good. I, I was a little skeptical, too, with her, but I liked the natural progression that we had with her character from being, you know, a nice person to... Her turning into a bad person. Yeah, and I like the dynamic that she had with um with Gal with Diana. Like she's being she's very envious of her being like everyone seems to be really attracted to Diana and she seems really cool and confident in herself and she thinks she, she's more good looking I guess and she doesn't feel like she stacks up to those type of women and she feels like she you know she's being overlooked by a lot of people so I actually thought that was very compelling. Um, we'll talk about the cheetah stuff later, but um, up to that point, I thought it was I thought that was really good set up for um, for motivations. Okay, so now let's <laughs> let's get it to let's get it to Pedro Pascal as Maxwell Lord. I know I know I know both of y'all don't like him, <laughs> so I I'll let you guys unleash in a second. But for me, I actually liked. <laughs> I liked Maxwell Lloyd this film. I thought I thought he was good. Um, the writing for him is messy. I'll admit that. But I thought his performance and his most of his motivation I thought worked for me. Um, first of all, I'm becoming a really big fan of Pedro coming from The Mandalorian. I thought he was great in that and just seeing him turn into this completely different person in Wonder Woman like I I never really realized how good of an actor he was like I didn't even recognize that was him when the marketing came out I, I didn't know that was him so it's like he really transformed this role so I really admire more of his performance than the actual writing itself and like there's some emotional stuff that he has with his son which we'll get into more detail later but it's like for me I know I thought it worked mostly if you overlook some of the writing <laughs> stuff which I know that's not something that people can do because like his motive his motivation comes for the writing which is not very not great but yeah go ahead what, what do you what do you guys think of Maxwell Lord uh, <laughs> we're on no. a great start oh boy no no he's like no <laughs> All right. I like Pedro Pascal I think he's he's a good actor mm-hmm um, and yeah, I can appreciate his performance to a certain extent because, you know, he's not a successful man and what, um, Maxwell Lord is, you know, he's trying to bring himself up to the top and, you know, and he just does it in basically the fastest way possible that he can. So you definitely feel the insecurity and the fake confidence from him like starting out. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the desperation, and then you see him, you know, have a crazy ego once he actually gets going. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate the characterization to that extent, but overall, as a villain, he was pretty lame. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I thought that the writing for his character, like, I don't have anything against how he acted it. Like, mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with his portrayal, I just don't think it was very compelling yeah okay. um i would have liked to see, have any background at all about how he knew about the dreamstone how he'd found anything out about it he just suddenly they found this artifact and he decides to become it but they never explain how he found out about it or why he wanted it so bad he just knew about it mm -hmm. yeah that becomes the source of his power that's exactly my problem feels like they skipped a lot Mm -hmm. that it could have been interesting to include. Yeah, mm -hmm. the characters jump to conclusions in this. Yeah. They have this stone that they found in a mall. Yeah. You know, in, the, in like a back, you know, area yeah. of like a shop. A black market. Sales. Yeah, and no one questions whether this is actually just some old rock. They all just say, yup, 
this is a special it's stone that has powers. It's an artifact. You know, we need to, you know, you can use this. You can, you know, yeah. do amazing things with it. But no one ever doubts whether that's actually true or not. And somehow Max Lord knows about the stone, like, ahead of time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he just goes after it without he like, how does he yeah. know <laughs> that that is actually going to do something then, for him? Oh, now he is the stone and he's granting all these wishes. I just thought it was a big jump for them to just take for him to start doing that. I would have liked to see background on how he found out about this. Yeah, and like overall anything. background on the stone uh, earlier on in the movie instead of them trying to just reveal it later on yeah. because they didn't even fully flesh it out enough for me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it doesn't make sense with the motivation. It's like if they knew up front, if they were able to find out a lot of information and background on it, then that would really give justification for the characters trying to go after it instead of just a, oh, look at that, all right, gotta get it. Oh, we already knew about it, and he already Mm. managed to get it Mm -hmm. one night, and oh, now it's gone because he knew what it was, and he knew how to use it to his advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think one thing we talked about um, before, Evan, was um, what would really would have helped this movie, like, remember in the first film where they had that exposition with the animation in the beginning, talking about the story of Ares and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. It would have really helped if we had si- something similar to that in the beginning of this movie, just explaining what the stone is and, like, yeah. what it's significant is to the gods and stuff like that. Yeah, and who specifically made it, what they actually used it for, and then let's actually see some flashbacks of these old civilizations using it you know mm-hmm. just do brief quick you know just showing its power and then showing the downfall of these civilizations right because this whole movie is like telling us instead of showing us and that's one of the biggest things with film is you're supposed to show not tell right um i'm going to defend a little bit about with the whole everyone's assuming that the the stone does stuff that's not necessarily true because up like when when um when Cheetah did her wish, and when Gal did her wish, they didn't assume that the stone did stuff. They were just like, they were just making fun, being like, oh, okay, this. And then oh. they just so happened to be like, oh, if this was real, what yeah. would it do? Like, like on the off chance. Yes, yeah, that... I was like, that off chance thing. And then, um, yeah, we assume Maxwell Lord just knows about it from the beginning, which I didn't think that was that bad. It's like, I would assume that he would do research before going after it, so that didn't bother me as much. But like with Cheetah, she didn't realize that was a stone until until she broke open her refrigerator <laughs> you know because mm-hmm. um cause yeah because like yeah she just made okay she she was okay there was that scene like when she went back to the back to the museum and did the wish thing or whatever hoping something would work but she didn't know for sure if it did anything up until she broke her refrigerator she was just thinking all oh, these are coincidences or whatever whatever and then when she got super strength that's when she put two and two together and then when they met at that warehouse and then they explained it with um with diana and steve there and being like oh this is the wish thing then she was like oh that's what that is okay so i don't think everyone assumed that the wish stone did whatever i think it was just a natural thing of oh i don't think it i don't think it does anything but if it did it would be great you know well, okay yeah there was some skepticism with barbara and diana but max just jumped on it right away without us really seeing him research it mm-hmm. and that's like the main thing with him being a villain than becoming the stone it happened way too fast with no explanation yeah yeah really with him that was the main problem Mm -hmm. and i guess the whole thing with maxwell lord is that the fact that he is so impulsive and is kind of insane and it's like he doesn't think everything through that's why i'm like i'm not as annoyed when he makes weird decisions like wishing to become the stone or whatever or doing all this other stuff because like he's not thinking straight it's not like um Jesse Eisenberg is Lex Luthor where he plans everything out up until the Doomsday stuff which seemed kind of out of left field like he he researched stuff he knew stuff ahead of time like he he knew the ins and outs of stuff so it's like with Maxwell Lord he doesn't have everything together so that's where I'm like yeah the the, the decisions he's making in this movie is strange but it's the fact that he's not all the way together and then that's a whole thing when he does become the stone he's starting to like physically decay and stuff like that and he's like being more desperate trying to do everything that he can to like keep himself 
healthy or whatever or trying to get more power and more greed or whatever you know what that does to people so that kind of that kind of came around for me and then the whole thing with his son on top of more stuff with his son I actually I like the stuff with his son um, I kind of it kind of spoke to me on a personal level I'm not gonna get too much into it but it's like the whole like estranged relationship with father and son that kind of spoke to me personally so I, I connected with that so that's why I don't feel like he's completely a one-dimensional villain he's just he's trying to prove a point that like he's not worthless or like trying to prove something to his son being like he's trying to be a good father or whatever so that stuff kind of worked for me I guess did y'all like the father-son stuff? Well, he's a sh pretty shitty dad until oh, the yeah, end. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's very true. Oh, like, yes. like, I just yeah. burst out laughing at the ridiculousness of, how many weekends do I have? <laughs> <laughs> like, you're supposed to like your kids. That's very true. I thought they could have done more with that mm -hmm. in the film, more with the father-son relationship. It felt like... Um, we saw his son like sporadically throughout, and then they had this big moment at the end. But yeah, they could that, have done more. That with poor it. kid, he was like breaking kid. my heart though because yeah. he, he oh just goodness. like stood there and was just you know silent. Like mm -hmm. he just didn't even know how to react to all this crazy stuff. He mm -hmm. just wanted his dad to love him. So mm -hmm. I will say the the simplicity with the son's performance actually came through very well for me yeah. and mm -hmm. i just i really felt bad for him yeah yeah poor kid poor poor kid goodness gracious um so even though yeah we have like problems with how the stone is being introduced or whatever do you do you guys care of that being a plot point you know just this wishing stone is this like overall as a plot point do you mind it being this way because i know some people are like oh my god you had this whole world war one thing in aries and then in this movie it's the wishing stone and cheetahs in the background yeah it was lame <laughs> <laughs> it was lame it's yeah, just it like like the writing that just that furthers the ridiculous writing like Max is just like baiting people like oh so you want so and so or oh so you're saying that you wish that blah 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 and then he's like trying to get yeah. them to say it Corner it's just them like it. it's just like I'm face yeah. palming like oh my gosh it would have been nice to have any lead up to the Dreamstone like to have yeah. any mention of it in any other film leading up to this so it wasn't just like oh here's this thing that we just found and now it's the point of this whole movie mm -hmm. <laughs> but oh at the end of the movie now we don't even know where it is like he renounced his wish where did it go who knows yeah um it just, it just goes back to my problem with saying things instead of doing things yeah a lot of this movie like you know like the plot moves forward through talking yeah. through him getting people to say things and then something happens and that's just exposition not exposition not compelling yeah. to just yeah. hear someone say oh i want so and so or oh i wish this or that you know when you're not really seeing much actually happen yeah like i think it's all based on execution and i i want to emphasize this that for people that say that people that want snyder to leave the the dceu he did the story in the first movie that everyone loves so much he, he, he had a big hand in the story in the first film. In this movie, it was Patty Jenkins herself and Jeff Johns. Mm -hmm. First of all, Jeff Johns, red, red flag number one. Um, Jeff Johns, he, he did comic books from D, for DC. But he's popular for Green Lantern and stuff like that. But it's like, it's, it's, it's different with you writing stuff on a, in a comic book and you actually doing screenwriting for a film like it doesn't translate so like the whole the movie film like it's just a big exposition dump it makes sense because like that's the type of stuff you would do in a comic book where people will be talking about how they feel or what's going on or what the situation is and it's not much showing that's how I feel there and then Patty Jenkins she doesn't really write her movies like she has other people write stuff so like for the first time her writing the stuff it's like eh. so those two together i'm like eh. and it kind of makes sense because jeff johns was did some stuff for aquaman and i think shazam and it's like there's some there's some there's some stuff in even though i really enjoy aquaman and shazam there's some stuff writing wise where i'm like this is kind of this kind of talk you're talking a lot and it's a little cheesy here and there but i was like that's the Jeff Johns touch right there. So for people to be like, we want the tone of Christopher Reeve, Superman, lighthearted, blah, blah, blah. We want you to talk about everything that's going on. Don't, sh I mean, tell us, don't show us. This is what you're getting. That, this is it. 
this is what you asked for, and then everyone's hating it. So I'm like, this is, this is really what you want. Like, I never wanted this to go into Christopher Reeve territory. This is, pre this is pretty much a modernized Christopher Reeve movie. This feels like, you know what this actually feels like? This feels like the modernized version of the Linda Carter Wonder Woman show that came out in the 60s and 70s. Th that's what it feels like. Like, this is not... That's probably why I don't like this movie, because, hot take, I hate the Christopher Reeve Superman movies. They're all trash, even the first two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hot take. Hot take. I have no opinion on that. Yeah, she hasn't seen the Christopher Reeve uh, <laughs> Superman movies. Maybe we'll watch them one day. I, I, though I don't want you to watch Superman 3 and 4, or Supergirl, because those are trash. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so it's like, is this really the tone that people wanted? Like... I, I I don't know, man. But anyway, let's talk about let's talk about Steve Trevor. <laughs> let's talk about Steve Trevor. Um, so everyone was trepidatious about them bringing Steve Trevor back because spoilers, he died in the first movie. So I'm like, and then they're just blatantly just putting it in the trailer. Like they're not they're not teasing it. They're not making it mysterious that he might come back. They're just literally being like, oh, he's here. He's back. How? Yeah, what yeah. those trailers? I was like, duh, what? fuck. They're just putting it out there. It doesn't. I guess it's not a yeah, big deal. No mystery at all. Just here, there he is, walking down yeah, the street. Big the question trailer. mark. Like, how is he here? So that was easily the biggest thing I, you know, I was worried about going into this movie. And ironically, that was the best part of the movie for me. Yeah, like the whole chemistry between Diana and Steve was great. I loved their chemistry in the first movie. Yeah, and it's, it's not a lot of romances and comic book films that I like but those those two are like one of the best in my opinion and it's just even better in this movie like like even when they're at the whatever that um the that apartment or whatever and they're just like talking in bed or whatever it's just so charming and he's eating the pop tart or whatever it's just like <laughs> this is, and then they're trying on they're trying to try it on clothes and stuff that stuff was cute and it's like yeah i just yeah. i would watch a whole movie of them too just if it was just a rom-com with those two i would watch yeah. it like it's I, that great i yeah, definitely so like the really dynamic cool. Of Diana and Steve, I just don't like that he came back by like inhabiting another man's body. Yeah, let's talk like, about that. What yeah. happened to that dude for those days while Steve was there? Like, yeah, where was his consciousness? That's one of my biggest problems. <laughs> is, yeah, where's that guy's soul? Just if, kick him out of his body. Where did he go? Alone. And then that's when all you got all those woke people saying, "Oh my gosh, Diana raped that guy's body." <laughs> 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 I'm not going that <laughs> far. Break <laughs> somebody, but like, <laughs> oh my god! But like, yeah, that that was strange. Now I knew about the I knew about the the um him being wished back going into this movie because the whole the whole you know the stone being in it. So it's like I put two and two together to be like, oh, so he's gonna they're gonna use the stone to bring him back. So I was like, okay, let's see how it's executed in the film. And yeah, I was very uncomfortable with him just taking the body of a random guy and he's the only one that could she diana's the only one that could see trevor through the guy but everyone sees the regular guy yeah with steve doing taking over his body like that's that's really odd like why did that need to happen because like everything else just happened regularly there was no yeah. twist or weird stuff going on like so this was just, it just felt really odd. And then it's like, I get they want to like enforce the fact that, oh, there's a cost to what, whatever wishes you do. Yeah, but the cost was her powers. Her powers, exactly. So like, why did he have to come back in another dude's body? Dude's no, body. I like that though. Yeah. I like that it costed her her, her powers. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a mixed bag for me because I like, I liked how the, the actors handled it. But mm -hmm. yeah, the it was kind of sloppy how they executed it with the, oh, he's just taking this other guy's body yeah. and we don't know what's happening to the other guy's, you know, his soul. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just seeing her reaction of just shock that he's there mm -hmm. and then him, you know, not really knowing how he's there, but he is and he's so happy to be there. That scene it at the was party. was so oh brilliantly my God. Yeah, like the watch. Out. And the, yes. Yeah, oh that my was good. God. But like... But Why didn't he question? Yeah, someone else's like, body? It like, uh, Imagine if he came back in his original body. He's just like a skeleton. That's what. That's what I was wondering. It's like, how is he? How, 
Like how? That's what I thought at first. It's like, how did he even get his body? Because you know the the plane blew up or whatever. Oh that's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> Came See, back with a skeleton. That would be D and D rules. That's how that would. Work. <laughs> it would be freaking out like, oh, everybody run! Get a skeleton. <laughs> Oh, that's messed up. Yeah, I'm just yeah, like... Well, he probably... Yeah, he did explode, so he wouldn't be able to come back in his original body. But, yeah. Oh, man. Like... And he hadn't aged at all. That was, like, what I was confused with. Like, oh, yeah. How was he in 1984 and he hasn't aged at all? Like, Diana. But he he came makes, back yeah. right at the moment he blew up or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's he really just dark. He from the plane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wormhole. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I just, just didn't know how to feel about that. But, yeah, it's like the overall chemistry and performances between um, Chris Pine and Gal Gadot made me not, not think about it the whole time. Mm-hmm. So that's a, I think that's just the main thing with this movie where there's a lot of plot holes and inconsistencies and stuff that make you question, why did that happen? But, like, I guess for me, like, just the overall performances of the of, of all the actors and just the, the t- like the emotional resonance with the film and like the thematic stuff like I thought they were done really well which made me overlook some of some of the problems with this film I guess which I'll talk about more when we get to the ending but um I guess one other thing I'll talk about is like their whole search for the stone it was a little slow in the beginning when you know they had to go to the desert and just like um they have to find um maxwell lord wherever because he's giving other people wishes or whatever it was like this whole indiana jones i I think that's what they were trying to do is like this whole raiders of the lost ark we're searching for the stone or whatever which i'm like i mean it's it's fine it's just like i felt like that middle part was a little slow i guess because there, there wasn't a lot of action in this movie. Yeah. Which, which is what should I should have realized. been more hidden stuff with swords. <laughs> right, but yeah. yeah. No swords, because we don't no want to be violent. But, um. But swords are so cool. Swords are so cool. Though it's like, how could he. Though in 1984, how could he just wander around with, with sword shields slicing up people, I guess? I mean, and then they're having this whole, to- you know, more optimistic type of feel with the movie and then you just cut the people cut, cut to her slicing people's limbs off <laughs> yeah, I don't like, know it probably wouldn't have worked thematically but like swords are cool swords are cool and the shield like, are cool and I get why they had like her lasso of truth is what she was using the whole film because oh, they had lasso. the whole thing about like the god of lies had created the stone and so the only thing that could defeat that was the truth and they had that whole thing in the beginning yeah. about her only like you needing to earn things honestly. Yes, it's so, one of the like, thematic I things it, I liked but... about the movie. Um, yeah, let's. Okay, that that lasso. <laughs> Since you brought it up, the lasso. Okay, um, I liked the lasso in the first movie because I going into it, I thought it was gonna be stupid because I. I, I'll admit it, the lasso I think is kind of silly, you know. But they made it really cool in the in the first Wonder Woman, like to use it as a weapon, and even the stuff when she does make people tell the truth, I, it wasn't really hokey and made it really grounded. In this movie, though, the lasso just does everything. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a shield. It's yeah, it's, a, just, it's a whip. It's like a multi tool, but a, a lasso. You can you can you can uh. Have people see visions with the with the lasso, and I'm like, okay. I thought it was too much. <laughs> it's a, it was a little too much. Now I know the lasso does other things too in the comic books, but it just felt like it was just. It felt like the, it felt like the sonic screwdriver from Doctor Who. It'll just do oh, whatever yeah. the plot says it needs to do. Except wood. <laughs> huh? Except wood. It would. Yes, for sure. Um, <laughs> but it doesn't do wood. Yeah, it was just. It was just really strange that you know Gal was just doing everything with that with that lasso, or it's like you know she she's using that to deflect bullets. She's using that to swing off lightning. Yeah, that was a thing I had a problem with. Oh, we had a discussion so about badass. this. Oh, that part was uh, so cool. I didn't like it. That's not how lightning works. You can't just. She's a goddess. Lasso. I am a scientist. <laughs> but it's a lasso of truth. 
It can do it if it, it wants to. It can just to. hold on to lightning. I did not like her using the lightning and the lasso to traverse the sky. I don't have a problem with her flying now. I think it's cool. Okay. But, like, I do not like that she's just lassoing to lightning okay. to go across the sky. <laughs> All right, now let's play... lightning works. Okay, let's play devil's advocate for a second. <laughs> let's play devil's advocate for a second. Okay. You remember the first movie mm-hmm. that she took... She took lightning blasts from a god, absorbed it into her gauntlets, and then deflected back at a god to obliterate, obliterate him. Yeah, that's fine. And you're okay. You're not okay with her swinging off of lightning. No. Or flying. I'm or turning flying. some ter- turning objects invisible. Or the last one just doing whatever the plot says it needs to do. <laughs> I don't mind the flying. I didn't like the <laughs> lassoing too much. Like, that's too much. Which is not an object. It's energy. Energy is matter. Just hold on to it. Energy no. is matter. No. You get struck by lightning, you feel it. It's yeah, because a, of the energy that goes through your body. Lightning is not matter. <laughs> it's not an object. I didn't like that point. Okay. So she's using the lasso for everything, except she didn't bother to use it on the stone to find out about it. Yeah. Plot hole. <laughs> yeah, you literally could have just yeah, wrapped it around the, past, the, the, then the why ring. Why could she have learned about its past? That's Don't. a good point. <laughs> Whoops. Whoopsie Whoops. daisy. But whatever. Um, but yeah, as we were saying, like, yeah, I, I wish there was a little more action in the movie. Like, there was like a three action beats I remember in the film, which was the mall scene. The, the one at the White House and the ending with Cheetah and it's like you know I normally don't have that I don't really have that criticism normally with comic book movies because I appreciate more of the character moments and the story and whatever I don't need spectacles every 30 minutes but it's like this one I, I, I was starting to feel the I was starting to feel the length of the movie this movie's two and a half hours yeah it was way too long and it, yeah it was noticeably light on action uh, yeah. Yeah, so, like if I'm gonna see a superhero movie, I want to see some action. That's what everyone is here for. <laughs> mm-hmm. It says it yeah. she was kicking ass so well in the first film. Yeah. It's like you gotta gotta give the people what they want, you know. Which is swords. Swords and shields. <laughs> she wants she wants her to slice people's heads off. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Heads off. Oh, I did we talk about the Themyscira thing at the beginning? Oh, you know what? Yeah, we yeah, need to talk about that. that. Actually, actually, one of my favorite parts of yeah, the yeah, movie. Yeah, my girl Antiope. Yes, I'm glad she's back. Yeah, I re- me too. I really liked her in the um, first movie, and I hear she's going to be in Zack Snyder's Justice League, so we're going to see yeah. more of her. So I'm glad to see her. I'm glad to see um, Hippolyta again. Um, yeah, the whole sequence where it's pretty much like an Amazonian ninja warrior, <laughs> like they had the whole Olympic obstacle course thing, I thought that was really entertaining. Yeah. The CGI was a bit unpolished. I... Like when she was, um, it was one of the... Uh, girls was like swinging like it was one of the, the first shots of that thing and like swinging super high up oh, well, it so looked very strange yeah I will talk about, I'm gonna have to talk about that in, in a minute but um but yeah I, I did see that a little bit and there's some other like effects shots in this movie that I was like hmm that's a little questionable but um but yeah I did like that overall sequence I thought it was fun mm-hmm. I thought it was kind of hulky she was the only girl in that in well, that she's race. the only child in the whole community. I know that, but it's like, I, it's like, did you really need her to be a kid? You know, it just felt, it felt kind of cheesy. Like, you know, this is the only girl, you know, competing with these grown women Amazons. And it's like, I know she's, she's a goddess. You know, it's like, you know, is that the same actress. actress that portrayed her as a girl in the first movie? I think so. How'd they do that? Did they do de aging? I think she looked a little older than she did in the first movie. Oh. I think it had to have been after her mom said that she could start training. Oh, yeah, the storyline wise. Yeah. let her do that. It yeah. had been like, oh, before she's like, you will train harder than any Amazon before you. Yeah. So had to be after that. Yeah, so I think this more goes with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it would have been just as effective if they at least made her a teenager or something, you know, just to make it seem like it's not as like hokey like Disney type stuff like oh this girl's competing with these grown women ain't it cool inspiration <laughs> i'm like okay yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um I didn't mind yeah. her being a child for mm-hmm. that but and then they have the whole thing about the truth she has to learn these the ideas truth. as a child yeah it's like you cannot you cannot be a hero based on lies which i'm like actually i like that i yeah. like that and it does somewhat tie in 
with the moral of the overall movie. I wish it was just enforced a little bit more because it like, I know for some people it's saying that that doesn't really have to do with anything that she had to do with the rest of the movie. Where it's like it kind of does, but just barely. So I wish they just enforced that a little bit more. It kind of felt a little like sloppy with the messaging, like a bit like heavy-handed like oh we're just gonna recite all this stuff like it was almost like a wachowski moment <laughs> where it was like oh yeah you you know nothing is more powerful than the truth you know the lies are you They're know based nothing on com- lies yeah nothing yeah um, they, this is this movie felt a bit preachy yeah in a it, did, of it did feel kind of preachy like okay yeah. look at you you've got an agenda oh brother yeah but at least like with this agenda i wasn't like Oh my God! What what is this? Like Captain Marvel, for instance, trying to well, they didn't sh- they didn't push their agenda hard enough in that movie. But it's like pushing the agenda, like oh, women are just as good as the men, and we can overpower the men, and blah blah blah. <laughs> like oh my God! At least it, like the moral they're trying to push while it's preachy, it was it was nice. It was it was you know. It was a, a sympathetic type of moral, you know. So yeah, that's yeah, what I, I did. I like about. the messaging, yeah. But, but yeah, yeah, it, it just was kind of too preachy, yeah. yeah. And then we'll talk about the whole ending speech <laughs> in a minute. But um, but yeah, I, I did like the action beats, like the the Washington D.C. fight scene um, when she's free cheetah she's not full cheetah yet but she has super strength and she's getting more pissed off or whatever um cheetah so i like i like that whole sequence and then you see wonder woman starting to lose her powers and stuff like that it was at that point actually actually the the sequence in the desert that when they're that chase on the highway or whatever mm-hmm. that's where the movie picked up for me which is like that's the say that's that's making it bad but it's like no this i mean because i enjoy i was enjoying it up until that point but it was it was at that point i was like yeah yeah we're in it now except for that god awful uh costume change Oh yeah, that huge inconsistency where she's in the car driving with Steve Trevor while she's chasing after Maxwell Lord, and then like Steve's looking back or whatever, and then we turn back to Diana and she's in her Wonder Woman outfit. Like it's complete bullshit. I paused <laughs> the movie and I slowly fast forwarded frame by frame. It's mm-hmm. bullshit. There's no way. Yeah, there's there's no way. Like Lily just cut and then she's in a different outfit. It's like, so you had that outfit under your street clothes the entire time, but nope, your gauntlets no weren't on. Yeah, and her and in her shin pads. Shin pads and their yeah. tiara and like. No, there's no way. Like she was wearing a very thin shirt. You would have seen it popping out of her clothes. Yeah, like uh, come on, like if you're trying to be the Linda Carter TV show, go all out. I was literally expecting. A shot of her spinning around in a twister, like the like the old show, and then her transforming into the outfit. Mm. I was that Lily. I mean, that would have been cheesy as hell. But I'm like, at least there will be an explanation to how she turns into the outfit. Because remember, Christopher Reeve, he literally just spins around <laughs> yeah, and goes was, into the yeah. Superman outfit. Yeah, so his, it's like his quick changes were ridiculous. I know people probably say, "Oh, Evan, you're you're nitpicking too much. You know, it's just a costume change." But it was like. Like, very noticeable yeah like, it, it took me out of the movie like it didn't make sense like not even the the mcu has that big of an inconsistency and like they have some inconsistencies but it's like especially because we establish up until this point that this is a grounded dc universe where there's explanations for everything you know and stuff is in a hyper realistic world so to, for her to just go into an outfit like that <laughs> within a cut that's really that's really out of place mm-hmm. it's extremely out of place so that was yeah that's the one thing that bothered me but i did like the overall sequence in the on the highway i thought that was pretty exciting and her trying to save those two those two kids and she's swinging off and then she couldn't get her full grip and then she almost got ran over i was like oh my god yeah that was <clears> a good sequence and then like i said when she started losing her powers in dc fighting cheetah and i was like oh god this is getting gritty now finally <laughs> But um, I liked all that, and um, the overall of the ending fight with Cheetah at the end, when she's full Cheetah, is there explanation? Full furry. Yeah, full furry. <laughs> it's like, is there a, a, a flat out explanation of why she's a Cheetah? Well, she says she wants to be a predator. She wants to be the apex, apex predator. predator. <laughs> and then they just like, okay, I guess she is now. She's a furry. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Cause yeah. Fine. Okay, sure. Cause like yeah, I guess Maxwell Lord was able to give her 
another wish technically because you could do that it's not really a lot I of rules. I thought it was just one, but... No, it's uh, so many... I mean, I guess which if she he's the stone, he can make whatever rules he wants, I guess. But, yeah, that was a little yeah. weird. Once again, just enforce that more. You know? Just, like, make that apparent. Make her... make Have a scene of... Or a shot of her... Of Maxwell Lord transforming... Um, her into cheetah or something whatever it's like we just yeah, she, just shows she up fades like and then she faints and then next scene oh full nope, cheetah there she is, there she is. Yeah, um, not my favorite <laughs> no she, she wasn't aware that she was the actual villain in the comic book so like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she was just yeah it seemed as someone who like hasn't read the comics it just seemed very <laughs> okay she's a furry now now granted we 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 talk about her actual backstory in the comic books. It's kind of messed up, <laughs> you know, because um, there's like this whole ritual that she did in the in a, like a with a native tribe, where she she gets these abilities if she becomes a guardian of that tribe, I think, and um, she took the she took the she she did the ritual. But the thing is, you had to be a virgin <laughs> in order to do that, and oh. she wasn't. And so she took the she took the thing, and then that's what turned her into a, f a furry, <laughs> pretty much. So it's like I don't know how you could translate that. Yeah, so they had today. To find some other way to do that, but like also, wouldn't she just not be cheetah now because she had to renounce her wish? And so like she was here just for. Well, this she didn't movie. technically renounce her wish. Okay. We didn't see her renounce her wish, you know, because she's still like. She's still like angry or whatever, so um, so that's where that's where that's where I'm like, there's a possibility she could come back in the next film. Um, oh yeah, where was the last shot we saw of her? I don't remember like so where after, we left off. We show her on the ground. At one you should point. show her on the ground because like, like when everyone is after, right she fought, after she fought, after she fought um recall. Diana, um she electrocuted her and then she just um she didn't die from that though, but um she. She just laid Cheetah on the ground somewhere, and then when um, when everyone starts to renounce their wish, then we just see a shot of her turning back to normal, but you don't see her renounce her wish. Mm -hmm. So it's I like I kind of took that as that she had because she went back to normal. Well, well, I think hmm. they don't like clearly say it, but that's don't how I say understood. It. I guess I I don't think her her strength or whatever went away like her cheetah stuff probably but like her strength and stuff i think is still intact somewhat i don't know no you know what you know what it is it's her wish was becoming like diana so she got strong the apex predator that was a wish from maxwell lord so mm. when he gave everything back she lost that part of it yeah because everything got undone so she lost the apex predator part but she still had how she was before that right right so yeah so I think that makes sense to me um I really like the, the cheetah and uh, actually before we get into that fight um I would talk about Diana's gold Ooh. armor oh that's uh, that's Emmy in the background if you hear her. <laughs> yeah that's my daughter Emily <laughs> yeah um she's hiding it's like oh <laughs> hey sweetie yeah, it's okay honey <laughs> but um yeah I want to talk about her gold armor it looked awesome in the marketing. Mm -hmm. so the, the, I was expecting some really cool stuff with that armor. And kinda. But not not that much. It's just really a it's just really a armor. It, that's pretty much it with some wings. And it's like the wings did some cool stuff, I guess, but it's like I was expecting a little bit more, especially with the fight with Cheetah. Yeah. Cause like she and then she just ditches the wings, which were the really cool part of the armor. Yeah, yeah the armor was so like, cool. Okay. I wish the, she actually got some more use out of it. Yeah. We just yeah. had it for like the one fight. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that Wonder Woman Cheetah fight was way too short. It was a great fight, but it was way too short. I thought it was just the right amount because one of my criticisms of the first movie is that I thought the fight with with Wonder Woman and Ares was went on way too long and it was over bloated and all this other great stuff happening so for me personally I'm glad that they scaled it back a lot but I mean I do see the criticism being like the fight could have been a lot longer but for me I was like that's that's just right that's just right because the rest of the movie was light on action yeah, I would like, have liked we didn't it longer have a lot of good for fights. that one and so it would have been nice to have more action in that one part. 
mm-hmm. or just more overall. They could have given us more fights. Yeah. Right. Or just did if she, if she just did if they just did more in the fight, like she was pretty much just guarding oh, Cheetah's attacks the entire time. And uh, and she's easily able to break the wings, which I know she has the same strength as Diana technically because she wished to be exactly like her. But it's just like, but it just felt a bit underwhelming, I guess. You know, because you push just push this armor so much, like she looks awesome, she looks badass and powerful. She's gonna she's gonna whoop some people's butts in this in this movie, which kind of does, but not that much. But I know I thought the fight was fine. Um... I talk about the whole ending thing with 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 Maxwell Lord got control of the president's technology, I guess, because of a wish that the president did, and so she they have this broadcasting system where it can it can you can tell me this, Shakes, that you're the you're the scientist. If this quantifiably does this make sense? I know it's going to be a no, but no. I'm just going <laughs> to just like so. There's particles. That shoot out in the in the atmosphere <laughs> that Land make it everyone. technically touch everyone around the world. No, that's this... some sci-fi bullshit. It's some, <laughs> yeah, it's some comic book logic. Yeah, which I mean, we sell plenty of comic book logic. Oh yeah, so. all, yeah. all the sound particles yeah. from from him talking touched everyone. Touched everyone. He technically, he was right. making contact, and so he could. That, that was that, that was just like a cop out, really. Yeah, like they and, had like, to. When he got control of the present, that's where I'm like, all right, you've just gotten too ridiculous at this point. <laughs> like he even got like the fact that he even got a meeting with the president with like on such short notice. Well, that, that's where wish for it. that's where yeah. they lost so. me. Yeah, it's like you gotta go with it <laughs> at this yeah. point. I'm just like, oh, uh, there's only so much we can go with. So, yeah, what, and then, at some point, it's too much to just be like, okay, this is fine. Yeah, but like, then the big sucks. climax is, everybody give me your wishes. And then he's just standing there like, <gasps> that's, like that's the big climax. Wish granted! Granted! Like, granted! This is my problem. We're not seeing anything. It's yeah. just talking. And then with the whole thing of everyone making a wish and them renouncing their wish... You're really being reliant on everyone around the world being as cooperative as the script is saying that they are. When in reality, we know that everyone around the world won't just un- unanimously resend their wish instantly. Even though they established that bad stuff was happening with most people's wishes, there'll be some people where their wishes, like, they're nah, not that bad. Works. Mine's fine. Yeah. So it's like you're assuming everyone is just going to go along with, you, with uh, you announcing your wish because the truth is the best and you can't live a lie. Is Nothing's like, more powerful than yeah. the truth. Well, I, this was another assumption, but how I interpreted it was mm-hmm. when he renounced his wish mm-hmm. to become the stone, that undid all the wishes he granted. So okay. I don't even yeah. know if everybody I, had to renounce their wishes. Everything that he did was undone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, okay, I definitely I can see that. Um, one thing I was thinking about... Um, a couple times I was watching it since this takes place in 1984 and Bruce Wayne was 45 in 2016 how old was he in 1984 let's do some let's do some math real quick because I have a big I have a big question if this lines up he's a teenager okay so if that's the case does that mean Bruce wished for his parents to come back possibly did that actually happen? <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait a second. I'm just th- I'm just thinking about this because this is the DCEU. So it's like, did Bruce, little Bruce Wayne or teenage Bruce yeah, Wayne, teenage however, Bruce is out there somewhere. That, did he well, wish for his happening. parents to come back and then did he renounce his wish? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, Emmy. I don't know. <laughs> or you know, they, he asked for his parents back and then they got taken away from oh. him. When, That's why he's so. Oh yeah, renounces this. Oh, when he re- <laughs> when, yeah, when Max renounced everything. <laughs> no wonder he's killing people in Batman v Superman. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just I don't have a problem with him killing. By the way, and for people saying Batman does not kill, I'll get into that when we do a re-review of Batman v Superman. But um, anyway, but yeah, the overall um, the overall speech with Diana at the end, it was really preachy. But I don't know. I was. I, I, I felt 
I felt the emotion with her, you know? That whole speech with her t using the lasso to tie up Maxwell Lord's leg and that's how she can communicate with everyone around the world is kind of weird. But I was like, okay, let's do it. We're just going to go with it. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> We're just going to go along yeah. with it. But like her overall speech, I actually thought was beautiful. Even though it was preachy as heck, I was with it. Oh, and something else that really got me was when she had to let go of Steve. Yes, that like part was to bring really her strength well back. Done. Yes, because like even like Steve was telling her, you gotta let me go. You gotta let me go. There's other great men out there for you. And it's like it's like I already lived my life. I'm already gone. I'm already gone. It's like I will never love again. I don't. I know we don't cry in movies, but that almost got me. <laughs> that almost got me. Like just seeing the emotion on Gal Gadot's face. She's about to leave. I'm like, oh my god. Oh yeah, my god. She, she just says, I love you, and then just starts running. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That was one of the weird. When she was running, it looked kind of. Looked kind of. Looked kind of strange. Yeah, looked kind yeah of that odd. did look a little weird. It was one of the I, I didn't care effects. about that. Moment. I didn't care because it was emotion. Yeah, yeah. The emotion. <laughs> and then she learns to fly. No. Uh -huh. And it's like, I actually like that. I liked how they introduced. Yeah. How she knew, learned how to fly. Like when they were talking about it earlier, he was like, you know, it's just wind, and you know, when they're in the plane. Yeah. So Steve kind of taught her how to fly. Mm -hmm. Also, that's another kind of plot twist. You kind of have to go with it is that he knows how to fly this yeah, much this, more technically advanced yeah. plane. He was a yeah. pilot in World War One, but he can fly. You know, this plane like all these, you know, you know, progressions in technology. He just figures it out. Yeah. Just. Yeah. And then on top of that, how they even get to the plane in the first place? Oh yeah, she just has a badge or whatever, <laughs> and, she's and able she can to just get in go there in. and steal a plane. <laughs> and then on top of that, Diana just so happens to oh, I know how to turn things invisible. I mean, a lot of things could happen between World War One and 1984. She could learn some abilities, sure. But it's like she she's she just so happens to be able to turn the whole jet invisible. Where do you think they <laughs> left it? It was really cool, but yeah, in the forest where somewhere. Where did they end up? Well, it's all in land somewhere in yeah. the forest. Is someone whatever. gonna like just be walking in the woods somewhere? He's like, Doink! Oh, oh, concussion! What is this? Invisible jet. <laughs> invisible jet. I'm gonna let you guys know up front. I'm not a big fan of the invisible jet. I think it's really hokey. I think it's cheesy. Why does she need an invisible jet? She can fly. Well, I just left it in the woods somewhere, so she doesn't have it anymore. <laughs> but the way they executed it in the film, I actually liked how they did the invisible jet scene. I thought it was cool. Yeah, it was, a, it was a really cute, sweet scene. Sweet scene. And I, I, one thing we didn't talk about, um, when when Steve is, when um, when Diane is taking Steve out into the world and is like, he's being all astounded at all the stuff, <laughs> like the museum and stuff like that. Uh, I really like that because it's like a role reversal because in the first movie, what you know, Diana is in a world that she doesn't know about and now in this one. Steve is in the world that he doesn't know about, so I like that it was a nice role reversal there. They did just such a good job of reacting off of each other. It felt very authentic. Mm -hmm. uh, one other thing I want to talk about is the score in this film. I think the score in this movie is great, in my opinion. Or at least there's like three really good cues in this film that I liked. The Themyscira scene, that that whole score I loved, and um, the end credits um, theme I liked a lot. And then there was a there was a musical cue from Batman v Superman when Diana's doing her speech at the end. It was literally the opening score of Batman v Superman in a different pitch. Mm. So I thought, oh, that was great. That's a nice callback to Batman v Superman. I love that. Um, but yeah, so after that whole speech, whatever, um, yeah, everything goes back to normal, and then. Maxwell Lord meets back with his son, which I thought that was another touching scene. And um, I really like that the end that Diana is more content with the fact that, you know, that Steve is gone, that she, you can see she's open to moving on. Because that was the whole thing with her in the movie. It's like everyone going through their struggles, like with Diana holding on to the fact that, you know, that St Steve is gone. She doesn't feel like she could truly move on with life or she can never find love or she'll feel completely alone and so that's why she made the wish of bringing Steve back and the whole thing with Chita feeling like she's not she just she's not good enough for society not good enough to be you know be recognized or noticed or whatever and that she wished to be more powerful or just as powerful as um Diana and then Maxwell Lord you know trying to overcompensate 
trying to be a good father and tr- not trying to make himself feel like he, you know, he's, you know, good dad and this powerful businessman that, you know, and all this stuff, you know, overcome with greed and stuff like that and decaying from the stone or whatever. So I overall, even though the execution may be wonky in places, but I like the overall thematic stuff with all the characters. Yeah, it, it was came around. it was satisfying at the end, like for me mostly with uh, Max and his son that he finally becomes vulnerable and can admit I'm not a good guy and I've been doing all of these things that are wrong when really you know I do want to be a good dad, mm-hmm. you know, and I do love you and I want to be better. Mm-hmm. So you know, for him earlier on in the movie to be trying to hide his insecurity to at the end accepting it I thought was uh, satisfying yeah Mm -hmm. um so yeah I think that's I think that's all the main stuff there anything else you guys want to bring up in the with the movie before we talk about the mid credit scene and grades nothing nope all right then uh yeah let's talk about the let's talk about the big credit scene which I didn't even think there was going to be a credit scene because DC doesn't normally do credit scenes. Well, sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. So the mid credit scene is um <laughs> they're in this they're in this town or whatever and there's this lady with black hair. You you see the back you see the back of her and she's just, she's walking. And then a huge light light post or whatever just falls and is about to hit this one lady and the kid and then this lady stops the pole and you know saves her. And then the lady goes up to her like, "Excuse me, excuse me." Thank you for saving my life. And then turn around. It's Linda Carter as Asteria, who's actually um, who's actually the, an Amazon character they they um, explained earlier in the movie yeah, that had the, the original armor, armor and yeah. stuff like that. So I really like they brought back Linda Carter to play that role. It's like a nice like passing of the torch where type this, thing. Where nice she's been all this time. Yeah. That character. Yeah. Where, <laughs> where she's been all this time. Yeah, like, why back. didn't she go back with the other Amazons? Like, they've all just thought that she died. <laughs> and, that's, so. and, and there's that point where it's like, don't don't think about it too much because this, yeah. like, we're already... Yeah, a nice nod. Maybe yeah. they'll explain it. Right, because then it's like we already we still have a lot of questions like what happened with Wonder Woman between this and Batman v Superman and Justice League because it's like she's like a hundred years ago I left for mankind or whatever and it's like that's technically still not true so it's like that type of stuff like she you gotta go with it or maybe Asteria just been in hiding whatever she's not trying to expose herself or whatever but I don't know. You think they'll use her in the third movie, maybe? I don't know. Oh, I think they, they must. Uh, I think that's what they're setting it up for. Oh, yeah. and while I'm thinking of it, in Justice League, mm-hmm. when uh, Bruce makes that roast about Steve Trevor, oh, and that, makes that. Even, that makes even less sense right now. Yeah. Since she did get, she did um, accept his yeah. death now. Yeah. That's, that, that was one of the things I just hated, even before this movie came out, because like, she was just so... She was just so obsessed with Steve Trevor at that point when it's like established that she moved on at that point. So she wouldn't be talking about Steve Trevor as much as she did. And so like, yeah, now it feels even more out of place with this because like it seemed like she moved on. And stuff so like I'm that. hoping that's a that's a Whedon scene. That's, a, that's totally a Whedon I, scene. I hope it is and that it won't be in the new in cut the new because cut. that doesn't make any sense. Mm. Yeah. Now, can Diana make some, you know, some references to him in Justice League? Sure. Uh-huh. He, she can have a couple, but like she just doesn't. She shouldn't come off as I still didn't couldn't get over him or whatever, blah blah blah. That still shouldn't be there. Mm-hmm. So I like that this movie was playing the seeds for that. Like she's moving on. She's like you know, you know, progressing. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I like that big credit scene. I thought that was nice, and maybe hopefully we'll see more of her. We'll see. Of hysteria. I wish there would have been more of a. Again, another visual scene like a talk like we talked about. We, they should have had a visual scene with the stone in the beginning. There should have been more of a visual scene of her in the gold armor doing stuff. Like I know they want to save all the stuff when Diana's in the gold armor, but it's like she's just yeah. shielded up and a bunch of warriors just hitting at her with weapons. I'm like, okay, that's all right, but I'm like, could use a little more. I don't know. But anyway, uh, we're gonna get to grades now. Overall, I like the movie. I like it. I enjoy it. Yes, it has problems. Yes, it has plot holes. Yes, there's script issues. But it's like, this is not an awful film to me. This is not, people are treating this like this is the Amazing Spider-Man 2. And I don't think it's that messy. And I know 
a lot of people loved the first Wonder Woman and mm-hmm. was expecting this to be the next Dark Knight. Like this is gonna this is gonna shatter everything that Marvel's been doing, and it's gonna set the standard of the DCEU, and it's gonna make a billion dollars at the box office, <laughs> maybe two billion dollars <laughs> oh, <laughs> <right>. during COVID. <laughs> right. Oh. But it's like. I didn't go into this movie expecting all of that. I know a lot of people love the movie, and I enjoyed the first movie, but I did not go in there expecting this to be the next greatest comic book film of all time. You know, I was expecting this to be an enjoyable film, you know, with with a competent story, competent emotional sh- stuff, comp- competent thematic elements, and they were still there. And I thought, you know, I thought the characters were very well realized. I, re- I like Steve Trevor. I re- love Cheetah, and I, I, I'm one of the defenders of Maxwell Lord. I liked it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I know. Um, there's not a lot of action in there. I could use a little more action, but the action beats they did use, I thought it was. I thought it was really entertaining. Um, I like the overall aesthetic of 1984. The, the cheesy stuff, cheesy aesthetic, wasn't that bad to me. I was going along with it. I did wish the. It was a more of a grounded story, you know, because that's one of the things I appreciated with the first film and the overall aesthetic of the DCU had a more grounded, realistic type of feel. So I wish that was more in this film, but I still enjoyed it for what it was. So overall, I'll give Wonder Woman 1984 a B minus. Evan. All right. Um. You know, I I'm still like mixed on on this you know i I really enjoy the performances and there are some really good moments in the movie but overall i can't get over the bad writing and the plot holes and just just really messy um uh delivery on the story and everything like that so i think i have to give it a c minus oh gosh So, Uh-oh. so just to establish, because we recently did the Birds of Prey review and you gave it a C. So you're officially saying that you would rather watch Birds of Prey over Wonder Woman 1984. I think so, and Suicide Squad. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think I also give Suicide Squad like a C. Mm. Mm. So. Mm-hmm. All right, Shay. I'm gonna come between those two <laughs> and give it a C. Um. I definitely didn't like it as much as the first film, and I did have some problems with it. It did have good moments, mm. so I think pretty solidly at a C for me. Where did you? Where would you get? Where did you get the first? Where would you get the first movie? First Just, one's an A. A. I assume that. I assume that. <laughs> oh, we didn't get your. What, what would you grade the first movie? Because I don't think we got your opinion. Eh, it's been a while since I've seen it, but probably around a B plus. And I'm like a. I'm like a B, B plus as well. If you guys have watched my Wonder Woman review, I think that's what I gave it. And I know I got a lot of dislikes for that because a lot of people love the first one. It's like, how dare you criticize this movie? I'm like, I'm sorry. It's not a perfect movie, but yeah, it's really good. It's good. Yeah, it's, I really yeah, enjoy it. I watch... 94%. <laughs> it's more like a 85, 83, <laughs> but you know, I still will watch it more than once. It's not Man of Steel for me, but it's still really good for me. I still enjoy it. Um, okay, so before we close this out, I do want to ask, um, if COVID wasn't happening, if the pandemic, if there was no pandemic and this came out when it was supposed to, which I think it was last summer, and it came out just the way it was, do you think it would have made a billion dollars? No. 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 I think it might have made as much as the first movie. I think it could have made 600 million or maybe 700 million because I think a lot of people would have been hyped for it wanting to see it after the popularity of the first one but maybe the bad reviews would have hurt that a little bit but I think it would have been pretty much on par with the first one mm-hmm. in terms of sales mm. yeah yeah uh, yeah if this movie was was had better was better written I think it, it probably would have made a billion maybe or at least 900 million possibly though no, then again i didn't think aquaman was going to make a billion dollars either yeah. so it's like one billion one billion but um yeah um 
so yeah that's our overall thoughts on Wonder Woman 1984 what did you guys think about it did you guys love it did you guys hate it did you guys think it was okay comment below and let us know is there anyone that liked this more than the first movie I want to know I want to know the opinions out there you know I know there's some people that actually love this movie and of course there's a lot of people that really dislike this film but you know let, let us know your thoughts down below I want to know but um, if you guys enjoyed this, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, as we said. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Um, so the next new release of DC we will be covering is Zack Snyder's Justice League. Yes. Full steam ahead in the hair. Cannot wait. Let's Mar go. March 16th, or I think March 18th, whatever, one of those days. Can't wait. Finally coming out. Mm -hmm. But before then, I'm going to do re-reviews of Man of Steel, Batman v Superman. And we're going to do a complete burial of... Justice League. Complete barrel of that. So tune in for those videos when they come out. But that's all we have for you DC fans. And we will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you guys later. Bye bye.